Hey there guys, it's Stealth49er here with another episode of my Minecraft Bucket Server tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to be covering the basics of installing plugins. And in the next episode, I will be going more in depth about a specific plugin. If there's any specific plugins or features related to Bucket that you'd like me to cover in a future episode, please let me know in the comments below. So the first thing you want to do is go into your web browser and go to the plugins.bucket.org page, which is linked in the description. And when you get there, you can see that there is a search box at the top and some different categories to narrow your search. So we're going to find the Essentials plugin for the sake of this tutorial. And you want to click Search. Now there are a whole bunch of different things that will come up depending on what you search. But we want to find the one that just says Essentials. And if you know what you're looking for, it's not too hard to find the right one. Uh, but otherwise, you can get a bit lost. So you can see here on the second page, a little bit down, probably about a fourth down the page, there is the Essentials plugin. You want to click that and it'll bring you to a specific page for this plugin. On the plugin page, you can see that there's a whole bunch of different information. We have the top bar here, which has an overview page, which is for uh, mostly just the general information about the plugin. Depending on the plugin, if it is a larger plugin, usually it will have multiple pages, and this will just be a general information page. And if it's a smaller plugin, it may have all the things you need, like the commands and the permissions, all on the one page. Now at the top, there's a pages link, and this will bring you to a list of all of the different pages. Again, it depends on the plugin and the developer, depending on the size of the plugin and also how well the developer has laid it out. There may or may not be multiple pages, and there may or may not be this many pages, and it may not be this well laid out. But you can see here that it is very well laid out. You have a whole bunch of different sections and different pages, so you have all the information that you will need. The other thing is the tickets page, which allows you to send a ticket to the developer if you're having an issue or if the plugin has an issue, you can do that there. Now on this sidebar, you can see that we have a whole bunch of different things going on. We have the download button, the ticket link here, and this will bring you to that ticket page to send in a ticket. The download button, of course, brings you to a download page to download the plugin. The facts area is uh, has a whole bunch of different information. You can see that you have this last update and development stage section. And the last update is important if you have a plugin that is out of date, uh, it may not work correctly. And also if your plugin you see on this page that it is out of date, uh, then you may want to consider if there's something identical to it, trying that other one if it is newer. Now a few months is not out of date. I've seen things that are a few years old and they work perfectly fine. It just depends on the development stage and how buggy it is. If it is in a beta stage or a really early stage and it hasn't been updated in a few years, you may want to avoid it. Now we want to go up to the download button and click download. And you can see it'll have a change log here and Depending on the developer, this may be very large. This may just say, fix some things. It just depends on the developer, depends on the plugin, of course. There's another download button. You need to click that, and that will open up a prompt so you can save it on your desktop. Now you want to minimize your web browser. And you can see that this plugin actually came in a zip file because it has a whole bunch of different jar files with it. So most of them will just come with a single jar file. You want to extract this folder. And then you can see we have all of these jars here. You want to open up your server folder that we created a few episodes ago and go into the plugins folder and drag that off to the side so you can see the essentials jar files and select them all. You can either hit control A or just manually select them all and drag them into the plugins folder. Now we can go ahead and close all of those extra folders just so you have the plugins folder open. Go back to the bucket server folder and run your server. Now let's go back in the plugins folder so you can see what happens here. When the server starts up, you'll see that these folders will appear. It's generating the configurations for the plugins and if we go ahead and go into the Essentials folder, you can see there's a whole bunch of different files because it is a very extensive plugin. So we have the Warps 
folder which has all the different warps. We don't have any warps set, but they will appear if you set some warps. The config file, which is the most important file. The items, which just has the name of the items. The upgrades and the worth for each of the items. Uh, this is a part of an economy. Uh, so the Essentials plugin actually has a built-in economy and you can set the worth of things for uh, doing the sell command. We'll get into that later in most likely the next episode. Now let's go ahead and open the configuration file. I'm not going to cover this entire thing in this episode, but in the next episode I will be doing a video on the Essentials plugin. So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different information. The configuration file of a plugin, as long as it does have it, is probably the most important file uh, because you can control all of the different options for that plugin. But as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do with the Essentials plugin, and I'll be covering that in a future episode. So another thing is uh, when you have a plugin installed in the command prompt, you will actually see some information about it. So since everything worked correctly, it said enabling essentials and it gave us some more information that told us that it was enabled. If there's something wrong, uh, it will either put an error in the command prompt or it will actually say that it cannot enable the plugin and that will tell you that it's either out of date or there's something conflicting. Maybe you need another plugin uh, for that plugin to work. All these things will most likely be on the plugin page, uh, just information about the plugin, everything you need to know there. That's gonna be the end of this episode, but if you did find this helpful, a like and a favorite would be greatly appreciated. Also, if you could share this video with your friends, I would really appreciate it. Get the word out about this series and also help your friends out as well. And if you're not already, make sure you follow me on Twitter, like the Facebook fan page, and follow me on Google+. All of the links are down in the description below. And if you're new to the channel and you do enjoy gaming, tutorials, and reviews, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.